This is a Devout Krieg. We are playing the Eastern Front Duration game with the Italian Duration, Caucasus Duration and Macedonian Duration added in. This is the situation at the end of February 1915. First thing I've got to look at is the demoralisation points. We've got Germany on 209. Um, Austria on 234, Russia on 399, and Turkey on 21. If we look at the supply situation, it's pretty desperate as usual. Now, the Austrians, because they've been on the run for quite a while, have, have hoarded a little bit of supply. The Germans have got tiny amounts of supply as well, um, they've mainly used all theirs. Russians, same thing, total shortage of supply. There's bits and bobs lying around, but nobody's got enough to do any sort of serious offensive activity. We've got a um, situation in the Caucasus. Winter ends this turn. Um, so if we remove that, we've got. Um, Turks are strengthening their position, but they're still not confident, not having any any real supply at all. Uh, every attack, it's apart from one that they've made against the Russians in the Caucasus, has been a disaster. Um, but they're regrouping and getting ready to have another push. Russians gradually strengthening in the Caucasus. They've been on the defensive all the time. Um, no, as I say, very quiet there. There's limited amounts of supply coming in and hardly any replacements. It makes it difficult. Unless you're going to be absolutely suicidal, which is what happened in reality. Um, Russians decimated their army and then the Turks went on and decimated their army. Um, we're playing this so low, I don't believe in doing that sort of thing it's not really achieving anything if we go over and have a look at the um, Serb um, Montenegrin front with Austrians no activity in the southern portion again the Austrians have had a, a couple of attempts to try and recapture this salient here not been successful but um, they've done a bit of um, damage to the Serbians and uh, suffered a few casualties themselves. They're now in a situation where they might start getting a few um, reinforcements, well not reinforcements, sorry, replacements coming through to them so they might be able to launch an, an offensive into Serbia again. Um, to say very quiet. Now the main thing that's happened here is the front sort of gone a little quiet over in Galicia and it's become a lot more active in Poland. So we'll go over and have a look at so East Prussia, pretty much stalemate, everybody dug in in trenches, nobody doing anything really. The main activity is the German attack into Poland, which has forced the Russians back a long distance now. Uh, across the border with also the arrival of uh, reserves from the Western Front enabled the Germans to push really deep into Poland. Um, they've, they've managed to capture a lot of territory. They've also entered Lodz so um, they're in a, very close to forcing the Russians out of there and they've cut that rail junction They've all well, they haven't severed the rail junction yet, but they will be soon. Now, the Russians have uh, been pretty desperately trying to stop the, the, this front from totally collapsing, and they've brought in well, they've been bringing in reinforcements from all over the place. A few from uh, East Prussia, but the vast majority have been brought in from the uh, uh, Galician front, which is has halted. The Russian attacks in Galicia completely now. Um, they should have enough strength built up here to stop this German offensive, but 
Um, the Germans are very powerful, even if they don't have a lot of supply. They've got powerful units, which the Russians aren't really um, kitted out to face. These 9585 strength units are nasty, really difficult to deal with. If we go into uh, Galicia, it's been very quiet along this area of the front. Um, the, there was a continuing offensives going on here. They pushed the Austrians back a couple of hexes. Um, they closed in on Chemsil slightly. The, the uh, Austrians gave a lot of territory around here and retreated back into the mountains. Um, the Russians have been attempting to take this entrenched position here for quite a while, but that's not really achieved. Sorry. Uh, this one here has not really achieved much and they were pushing quite heavily against the Austrians along this line here um, but it's all ground to a halt because all the excess divisions they had that they were using to attack have been moved to Poland so the situation's changed quite drastically um, if we look at um, Things now that are changing, winter's gone. And we move the these little winter things because I need these things, otherwise I never remember. Uh, the last winter one goes from here. So just means in winter it's easier to launch supplied attacks. Uh, you can supply over longer ranges uh, for both defense and attack than you could do normally. Also, cavalry don't have to um, take supply at all in, in winter, uh, but in the in in the summer and stuff like that, they can actually operate in a at full strength in an unsupplied state. Um, don't think there's a anything extra coming into effect with the March turn. Um, I'll have a quick scan at this. Um, as I say, I don't think anything new is coming into force in March 1915. No, March, yes, there is something. March 1915, this is an air power rule. I'm pretty sure that this is uh, from the campaign game it's something i've added in uh, right march 1915 air power over oh west only <laughs> right so it doesn't affect this um no i don't think there's any change in the uh, overall supply situations for everybody at this particular point no it looks like uh the game is, is not going to be changed by any major rule alterations at this this month. Okay. The only thing that is worth mentioning is the Germans' ability to attack deep into Poland here was caused by the arrival of the all those reserves that should have been committed in East Prussia that weren't, which was a, an error on my part. Uh, so they've had an impact, but not in East Prussia, in Poland. And that's it.